Welcome to the penultimate talk of the FOSDEM 2020 distribution dev room. Up next, we have Frederic Crozat talking about integrating new components on fast and slow moving distributions. Hello, everybody. So, um, I'm Frederic Crozat. Uh, I'm working at, at SUSE as um, one of the SUSE Linux Enterprise release manager for server and desktop. And yeah, I will talk, walk you through how we handle changing big parts of the distro um, on the various distro we, we take care of. But first, some words about SUSE. So we don't do this thing. So this is mostly for <laughs> French-speaking people. Uh, but we do this thing, especially if you were at the booth of the open to the booth. Um, but yeah, more seriously, um, <coughs> before, before we go into... Uh, more the details and, and the policies we, we, we use. Um, first, a bit of um, general um, vocab vocabulary so that we are all at the same uh, level. About distribution style. So, roughly, these days, um, there are three kinds of uh, distribution style. What we could we, we can call rolling release, regular uh, release, and LTS or enterprise or stable uh, releases. So, um, rolling release, what do we mean by that? It's usually bleeding edge, a bit sometimes a bit too bleeding. Um, released as soon as possible, as fast as possible. And as example, I would say. Open to Stumbleweed, obviously, um, Arch, uh, Gentoo, and probably others. Um, regular release, it's a thing which came first in the Linux world. Um, usually, distribution like that are released one time a year, sometimes two times a year. Um, in the very old days, some crazy people were doing that every three months. Um, I was part of those crazy people. Um, the thing is, those distro, every t every for each release, they update everything, which can have a lot of ch bring a lot of challenges, because you have to stabilize everything at once. Um, and then you have the LTS or enterprise releases, which are uh, released very. Uh, less often, so yearly cadence, sometimes even less than that. And there, the point is to change as little as possible. Uh, the reason is, um, especially uh, in, in enterprise, in the enterprise market, uh, customers are extremely frightened as soon as you change one bit somewhere. Because if they have validated their entire infrastructure, oh, it's running fine with this version of this distro, and then you tell them, yes, but you need to upgrade to the next service pack. And they are like, oh my god, so how much has changed? Uh, can you guarantee that those, those packages have not changed, etc." cetera? So um, it's really a matter of changing as little as possible, um, but still bringing bug fixes, new feature, etc., etc. So there, I would put OpenSense Leap. I will explain a bit later. Uh, Ubuntu, the, the, the LTS flavor, uh, and on the enterprise market, uh, the SLE family, SLES and SLED, yeah. RHEL, you, you name them. So now, jumping more into the OpenSense and SUSE world, uh, <coughs> I will use a lot of uh, acronyms, uh, OBS. So, who has uh, ev heard about what OBS is? Ooh, that's nice. So, for those who didn't uh, put their hands up, uh, OBS, uh, and I see you, Internet, uh, OBS is the Open Build Service. It's a, a service that uh, OpenSUSE has provided to everybody to build packages for almost every distribution. Not just the OpenSUSE distribution, but it can be uh, for Fedora, for Red Hat, uh, for Red, sorry, for uh, um, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, yeah, 
tons of distribution are supported. Um, so that's what what is part of the, our, our processes. So SLI, as I already mentioned, SUS Linux Enterprise, um, it's an enterprise DSO that SUS is, is uh, creating. Uh, there are <coughs> several flavor server desktop. Uh, open source Tumbleweed. So um, Tumbleweed is a rolling release, as I said before, of, uh, of open source. I will maybe sometime talk also about open source factory. Uh, the point is that initially open source Tumbleweed was a rolling release crea created by Greg Crowartman based on a regular release of open source and then he was changing a lot of things on top of it. And after uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of processes put in place, now um, the development uh, dis uh, distribution, which is open source factory, is then tested and shipped uh, uh, from time to time. And this is what we call open source tumbleweed. More on that later. Open source leap, it's a stable slash LTS release of open source. The point is, um, it's a mix of components coming from the SLI, so from, from the SUSE distribution, plus a lot of other packages coming from Tumbleweed slash factory, you say. So it's a mix of something new, something old and something new. Some people might say it starts to resemble uh, things about wedding, but no. Um, anyway, let's talk about um, how we handle uh, integration of uh, of changes in 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 the open source and through the world. First, in the OBS, so in the Open Build Service, we have the concept of develop project. The point is that every source, uh, when I say source, I mean a uh, source package. Um, every source package uh, need to be in a project, and a project can aggregate. Uh, various uh, uh, packages, those packages together. And we tend to have those um, projects, so those develop projects per topic. So you want, obviously, to group things together, like having all the things around X11, so the X11 server, uh, plus the libraries in a single project, because usually they will have to be built together. Same about KD stuff. KD, uh, all the KD packages would be in a KD project. P a project can be cut in several sub-projects, but that's roughly the idea. Same for GNOME, etc., etc. And any changes in those um, uh, projects are done. <coughs> sorry, um, any change in the distro, sorry, um, has to be done first in a devil project, and then pushed to, uh, to the upstream distro, let's call it this way, or the downstream, depends, uh, to the distribution for integration. The push is, can be made either by uh, a human being or bot. How does it work? Um, don't be frightened by the, the, the schema. But um, you have done some work on any random packages. Uh, so. It has been done in the devil project. Uh, now you want to push this work in the distro. Let's say in Tumbleweed. Uh, so the thing is, you are going to do what we call a submit request, which is basically uh, the, the big diff of changes. Um, you push that to this distro, and then uh, the magic, or the pain, it depends uh, where you, you, you are, you are um, begin. So there are going to be several things uh, done at the same time. First, this change is going to be put on what we call a staging project. This is um, a snapshot of the distro. And we take this snapshot and we just put this change in it. And we rebuild the distro based on the build dependencies, etc., caused by this change. So this, this is building. Then at the end, you will get, end up with a mini, mini distro. The distro rebuilt with this change. And then you give that to 
OpenQA, which is another uh, SUSE, uh, open SUSE project, uh, which how many people know about OpenQA in the room? Ah, I would, let's say half. So for the other half people, uh, half of the room, uh, OpenQA is an automated test testing framework uh, based on uh, image recognition, among other things, which is uh, there to mimic a human testing a distribution in all the applications. So it's going to start a distribution, so in a virtual environment or sometimes even on real hardware, uh, click everywhere it's where it's needed, uh, check that, uh, yes, you get uh, the proper button at the right location, etc., etc., etc. So install a system, then run it, check that uh, whatever application you expect to run, run, etc., etc. Um, so we have that on one point, on one side, and in parallel we have uh, reviews done on the, on the change itself, like uh, review on, on the code itself was, uh, does it add a patch? Is it well formed? Is it uh, introducing a vulnerability? Uh, is it with a reference to an upstream commit, for instance? Um, there is also reviews like, uh, is, there a, um, is the entire thing uh, correct in terms of legal uh, license? So there is a license tag. Is there something in the, in the table which is uh, uh, under a proprietary license, etc.? Um, <coughs> and a lot of bots are doing automatic check uh, on that. And just with that, just with the automatic check, we already catch a lot of errors. Based on those two, if everything looks fine, basically you have a change, uh, it doesn't break the, the entire QA thing. So then we commit, we accept the change, we put it in the distro, we rebuild the entire distro, and then we have a new ISO that we are going to put again in OpenQA, but this time not with a small sub, uh, sub, uh, subset of the test suite, but the entire test suite. When I say you have a one submit request, in, in fact, we never do that with just one change. Usually, we aggregate change together, either because they need to be aggregated, like you need to upgrade two things in parallel, or do uh, you upgrade that and you need to patch this other package and this other package, otherwise it breaks. Um, and of course, it would mean uh, if we were doing one staging per change, uh, we could not keep up, keep up with the pace. I, for uh, I forgot, if you have questions during the talk, please ask them. Don't wait uh, at the end. Uh, interrupt me. Um, so, another thing that we have, so this is more for the through the part of, uh, of the thing, we have a policy that we call factory first, uh, which has been in place for um, quite a while, 2017, which is kind of, um, we want to make sure that all the work which is done on the enterprise distribution, you know, which is sometimes a bit um, on older software, has to be always pushed to the uh, factory or tumbleweed uh, thing to make sure that we don't, keep things just for the enterprise customer, but it's available to everybody. Even if you're an enterprise customer, everything is under uh, free software license. Don't, it's not the point. The point is to make sure that we always retrofit and push our patches or changes upstream, upstream being tumbleweed, but then, of course, being in the upstream project. So this is very important because based on our experience, it was not always a the case in the past, and sometimes we had to fix bugs uh, when we rebase our code base and take a new snapshot of Tumbleweed to create the next generation uh, of SLEE. We discovered that a bug which has been there for eight years, we patched it every two years when we were redoing the branching because the patch was never upstream. And the worst part was when, you when we upstream it, it was still applying. So it would have been done eight years ago, and that would have saved work for people over the years. But anyway, so we have that in place, and we have a lot of uh, bots ensuring that uh, this is done properly. So now... It's also actually a measure to avoid that 
Yes, so um, uh, comment from the room, it's also a, a, a way to make sure that uh, SLI doesn't go in one direction and, and OpenSense is in another direction uh, because in the end, SLI is uh, a downstream of, of OpenSUSE. So uh, if we, I mean, you, you all know you, you, you hack on this tool. So as soon as somebody tries to do a downstream and doesn't contribute back his changes, then they are the ones who are going to feel the pain later. Uh, there are a ton of examples there. So let's talk about uh, GNOME 334. So uh, over the previous, uh, the last months, uh, we have been working on, on upgrading GNOME um, in the various distro. Uh, so let's go over that. I talked about the develop project on OBS. So um, usually there is a one develop project, which would be in th that case GNOME, but <coughs> uh, the OpenSUSE GNOME team has decided to use uh, two layers. One layer, one, one project, which is the GNOME factory uh, uh, develop project, which is really the develop project. But sorry for people on the internet. I hope, I hope I didn't kill you here. Um, twice. Let's avoid a third time. Um, so, yes, uh, GNOME Factory is the project which, co which contains the last version, um, the latest version of the stable version of GNOME. So, uh, until uh, September last year, it was uh, 3.32. Then 3.34 was released, so that's where you expect to have the latest version. And then um, GNOME having a cadence of uh, six months. Uh, there is another project on top of that, which is GNOME Next, which is obviously by its name. It's what's going to happen in GNOME in the future. Um, the idea <coughs> is to have in this project not... Uh, the development packages of GNOME from the beginning, uh, like when there is a dot one or dot two of the next version, because it changes uh, often and sometimes uh, maybe more in the past. Uh, uh, everything would not build uh, properly, etc. These days, it has improved a lot. Um, but at RC, uh, at, at release candidate time of GNOME, having the package is there so that we can start preparing everything uh, in advance. Um, and this also allows to these two layer things. If we get bugs report on the stable version, we still can push those bugs, uh, those bug fixes uh, to uh, our users. They don't have, to, they are not bug blocked because there is a development uh, version in being integrated. Yep, and as I said, next, GNOME Next is layered on top of GNOME Factory. So uh, OBS is smart enough to do links and branches. So um, it will detect if you do a change in the uh, uh, stable branch, so GNOME Factory, it will propagate uh, immediately to GNOME Next. So this way we know we are not going to lose a fix because we fixed something. And then we rev up the, the version of the package, and sometimes you end up losing things. Uh, so, <coughs> upgrading uh, 3.34 in Tumbleweed. Uh, so, as I said, the packages were upgraded to 3.33.90 something uh, during the release. And we had also an automated uh, uh, build of a live image. So you know this kind of ISO. Uh, in the old days, you were burning a CD, you were putting that in a, in a computer and you were booting the CD directly you didn't install to test things. These days you can do that with a VM, but still, the point was, let's create an image based on Tumbleweed. We just uh, replace the GNOME on top of it with the GNOME Next packages and let's see if it boots and it it works uh, like application start. Having that already helped a lot to make sure that um, what it is in GNOME Next works 
good enough. Even, even if it's just a few tests, not the entire test suite, but still. Um, yes, yeah, so that's what I, I described. And then GNOME 3.34 was released. Point zero was released. Um, and then the work was to get this pushed into GNOME factory. Um, this is a bit tricky because uh, open source GNOME people like to do things right. Um, I have, yeah. So, uh, what do I mean with that? Is um, in GNOME Next, basically, people can submit things, even commit things directly if they are part of the uh, <coughs> open source GNOME team. If they are not, they can just throw, uh, submit a change, uh, uh, change request. It's going to be reviewed by somebody else. But um, any change in GNOME Factory has to be review, reviewed by four eyes, which means the person who submitted the, f the, the change or the version update, it needs to have two other people reviewing what he or she did. Because, um, yeah, it's kind of ensuring that there is a good quality of the change. Sometimes even up to is the change log properly spelled. So that's why when I say the open source GNOME team uh, is sometimes very picky. But that's kind of uh, to ensure that over time the, those packages will be easy to maintain by somebody else. Um, so once 3.34 landed in factory, then it was pushed to Tumbleweed. Then there is another um, four eyes review, um, review. This is not done by the same people. This is done by the open source review team. Um, so again, they checked things. Sometimes they noticed things that skipped through uh, the open, open source GNOME team. Um, but over, overall, usually it's quite smooth. There is a legal review of the changes. Um, for GNOME, it's usually not a problem, but sometimes you can have one random package which is pulling uh, one uh, GitHub repo in a tarball, co a copy of a GitHub repo, where there is a test case which is under uh, whatever fancy license, and then the legal bot say, I need a lawyer, I cannot uh, pass it. Um, we have that, and then we have this entire staging approach that I described earlier, uh, where we put GNOME in it, and then we try the rest build. And sometimes, yes, sometimes, <laughs> not really. Uh, so we have to make sure that ah, there is uh, this package, this, this other packages, and the third one, which were fine before we tried to upgrade GNOME. Now they are no, no longer built, so, so then we um, notify the maintainer of those other packages. Could you have a look? Because uh, if we accept this staging, which we won't, uh, it's going to break your packages. So we do that at the compilation level, and then uh, at the uh, QA testing level, or open QA, where it's going to install the mini distro with the entire GNOME update. So this time install, not just a live, live image. And then run all the possible tests uh, which are written like, I don't know, starting gedit, uh, starting uh, uh, evolution, making sure you can still read your mail, whatever. And often, you discover that uh, because OpenQA is based on image recognition, uh, your, some pixels have moved a bit. Some, the theme has changed completely. Uh, so there is a bit of fuzziness. So OpenQA can be, can be set up in a way so that it doesn't expect 100% match. But being fuzzy up to 95 or 90%, I don't remember what is the default. Yeah, uh, Richard is telling me 95 is, is the default. So uh, sometimes if, if it's like the font has changed a bit, but not too much, um, so the fuzziness will make sure it's okay. But um, yeah, with, with 3.34, um, I think it's, it's 3.34 that the, the theme was updated to something 
distinctly, I mean, a human could see there is a difference, then we had to update the, the, the needle. Yes, question? So the question was, um, uh, we have this kind of layer of, of, uh, of the, on the distro level or on the package level. Do we have this, the similar concept on the OpenQA level? So we don't, have, we don't have it, but we have something a bit different, is that OpenQA is not, um, when it's expecting to check for uh, a needle, so um, to check for a screen, uh, screenshot and finding something which match, it doesn't uh, search for just one matching. We have a list of matching, uh, possible acceptable thing. And also with that, we have some tags. So for, we can say, you can accept not any, any of the screenshots we have put aside, but those which were tagged like, this is for starting evolution. And then uh, we, were like, we will be in that, at that point in time in the test, we are expecting a, a, a needle which is Starting evolution, check all which are in the in the in the database. It's a GitHub repo, but um, uh, checks all of those, and if one match, we are good. And we can even refine with something like uh, we want a repo, um, a tag of starting evolution, and the distro is tumbleweed or is sli or is open to the leap, because sometimes we have things which are different but on purpose. Yes? Do, do you use um, text recognition to, to avoid these issues with screenshots sometimes? Or? So the question was, do we use text recognition to avoid the screenshot thing? Um, no. Uh, I don't think it was ever tested. It was? Yes? It was. If, if, if this was way better. <laughs> so uh, answer from the audience from Richard Brown. So it was tested, and the current approach is way better. Uh, yeah, um, so it's surprisingly good, uh, let's say, because uh, one, one thing I forgot is on the needling part, we just don't, we don't do full screen uh, matching. We can just highlight, I want to check one part on, of the screen, like this button or this text, and even if it moves a bit in the image, in the, in the result, the matching will be fine. So with that plus the fuzziness, it's usually able to, to catch a lot of things. But it's, it's, it can be a pain, for instance, for localization. Because we don't test uh, the distro in French, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. Because it would mean we have to do, redo all the needles. Okay. Um, then, once the staging was accepted... There is an open peer running again, but this time with the entire test suite. And if it works, there is a, a bot which is going to say, yeah, sounds good. Uh, there is as much breakage as before. So we didn't break much as before. Uh, so, so the quality is the same or improved. It, isn't, it didn't decrease. And the bot will uh, automatically uh, release a build uh, to our uh, open, um, open source tumbleweed user. Um, <coughs> so, in this case, uh, 3.34.0 was available less than a month uh, after it was available upstream, which is um, good and bad at the same time. Uh, it's good because it's, yes, it's less than a month. It's bad because we were able in the past to be even better than that. Sometimes we were able to release it the day after the release of upstream. Or, or even sometimes the same day because the tables are already really, uh, are already a bit uh, before. Um, this time it didn't work well because we are lacking hands to do the packaging. So uh, if you are willing to help, uh, please join. Um, it's fun. So I talk about OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Let's talk about SLI and OpenSUSE Leap. Um, First, uh, yeah, I said about 
uh, leap that it's based on on uh, on sleeps, but how do we do things? The idea is there is a set of packages which are um, I mean SLE is a bunch of pack of packages. From those packages, uh, we create what we call a share core. <coughs> and then Leap is uh, reusing that and inject all the packages which are coming from Tumbleweed, which are the latest and greatest, let's put it this way. Um, and we do that for uh, the 15.0 code base, so this is where we branch directly we did we took a copy of Thumbleweed. we just kept the packages we wanted for an enterprise distro uh, and for leap the community decided oh we want also those packages because they are not part of the enterprise distro but the community wants those packages for instance uh, 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 SUSE doesn't ship anymore as supported packages uh, the KDE uh, environment we just ship one desktop which is GNOME uh, the other desktop are available through the community by either in Leap or with another mechanism which is called package up. But I will not go too much into details about that. Um, we do that for the major release, so 15.0. And then uh, SLEE has a cadence of doing a service pack every year, which is, um, and the the idea is a bit a uh, TikTok approach where there is one service pack where there is going to be mostly stability fixes plus a few uh, features. And then uh, uh, the next uh, iteration will, will be uh, let's update a bit more things because we are starting to educate enterprise customers. Yes, you can still upgrade the kernel while being in a stable list. It's a bit difficult, but they are starting to get it. And we, we do, for instance, also we update the desktop also from time to time. So we don't have the pain of maintaining a very old desktop. Uh, and we, uh, this way, customers can enjoy new features from the desktop upstream. Uh, and we enjoy less bug fixes to bug port also. Um, <coughs> so how we did it for SLE 15 SP2? So we, have, we had GNOME Next. So on OBS, and there, which was it was building uh, on top of Tumbleweed. So we we added another repo in this project. Let's build it on top of Sli 15 SP2, which was and is still under development. Uh, yeah, I forgot Sli 15 SP2. The development is uh, always available on the OBS, so you can see where we are going. This is not uh, behind closed doors. Um, so then we looked at how, uh, how much is it broke because um, even if we have those, this factory first policy, um, we, make sure, we make sure to push all our patches to Tumbleweed, but sometimes we push package, uh, patch, but we don't apply them or we don't enable them because some changes are really for enterprise customer and you don't want to do that for, um, let's say, uh, regular or yeah, non-enterprise customer where it's like limiting things, etc. Uh, so we don't want to have a lot of people shouting at us. Um, so we discovered this kind of breakage, like patch up, not uh, applying anymore. So we had to update that. Um, then, because Lee is kind of older than Tumbleweed, we discovered, oh, uh, this doesn't build because it needs this new package, which is not in SLE. Or, um, oh, this doesn't build because it needs the latest version of Mason. So now we have to update Mason in the next service pack. And then you discover, oh, but we need to update CMake also because the test suite of Mason doesn't pass anymore because you need another fix in PKG config because the one we had was a bit too old and it, was, it had a bug which only is seen in the test suite of the latest method. So this is the kind of, you start to put the finger there and it's like, oh my God. Uh, but it's, it's interesting. Uh, it's challenging, but it's quite interesting. And you also discover 
that even if the, the tumbleweed and the packages done by the open source GNOME team are of high quality, sometimes uh, anybody can miss that, oh, you need another, uh, there is a build request which is a new version of this package. Uh, it happened, it was already in tumbleweed, so nobody noticed that it needs to upgrade this in the build request, but instantly it's not the case, so you have a random failure of why it's not building. So this kind of thing we, we, we went through. Uh, at the same time, we also created uh, a staging project. Same ID. We take SLI, uh, which is develop under development. As a base, we put GNOME, the GNOME rebase on top of it. We check, does it build? Then, uh, yes, it builds. The, let's create a distro of, of, on, from that. And let's run on OpenQA and fix all the needles and all the test case and all the changes which were not really expected because you upgrade whatever components. Then, uh, for instance, uh, over two or three releases, I don't remember, uh, now GNOME shut down GDM when you are logged in. So you no longer have GDM running uh, in, uh, in your initial graphical console except that there was some test case in OpenQA which were kind of, oh, let's search for GDM to detect where uh, it's, which VT it's using. There is no longer GDM running anymore, so you are like, ah, I need to update the test case, and this kind of thing. Uh, yep, so what did I say? Yep. Um, as I said, we also make sure to push to SLI only, not the entire GNOME Next, project, but just the packages which are, sli um, which are shipped on SLI, because again, we don't ship everything to our enterprise customer, and all the other packages, they are always available to the enterprise customer through what we call package up, which is kind of a repo where all the packages which are available on Tumbleweed, more or less, uh, on, on Leap are available to SLI customer unsupported. So they can, and we say, you can install those packages on your distro, but don't call us, they won't be supported, but we won't tell you, you broke your system because you installed those packages. We, we double check those. So to get things into some green state, it took roughly a month. Um, <coughs> then, we, okay, this, this is, looks great. Let's accept it. We accept it. And then uh, we started to see all, another set of failure because for um, speed reason, we do things on Intel platform for our staging because already building this and having the test run, it's kind of time consuming. So we don't usually do the staging approach on other architecture, except that, um, the SLI world is like, we support AR64, PPC64 LE, so power, and mainframes. So yes, you can have GNOME running on a mainframe. Uh, we even discovered that we were the only one for this version of GNOME. We were the first one trying to do it because it was not working and it was a bug upstream despite other distro having it built, but apparently nobody was trying, ever tried to run it. Um, kind of funny, it was a bit of a pain uh, to, um, to debug it. In the end, it was not even GNOME fault, it was a bug in the Mozilla code base, because Mozilla doesn't care about mainframe, obviously. Um, yeah, so, but we, we were able to backport the proper fixes. So. And we even had um, yeah, we, after that, after fixing, fixing that, we updated also the rest of the application. And sometimes we forgot things. So we, we discovered after, after a while, oh, let's rebase things. And then, wait, I think I forgot to update dconf. So I had one of the layer, which is kind of saving all the, the configuration on disk for GNOME. I had the version of three, GNOME 3.26 and everything was running fine. <laughs> so it's, it's, 
Yeah, enterprise stable. So we can say GNOME is enterprise stable, or at least Deconf is enterprise stable. Uh, but it was surprisingly, I would have expected to have random bugs here and there. No. Um, so right now we are running at 3.34.2, one between one and two, because we have a few packages. Uh, we did that before the Christmas break. So. Um, we will update uh, soon uh, to 334.3 or maybe 4 if there is a .4 release. So we we have GNOME um, in SLI since uh, the first version, so since November. Then uh, we should have GNOME in LIP because after all, LIP is created on top of SLI, so it should be fine, it should be easy. Uh, not really. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you, I mean, I kind of tell you, told you, but uh, is that um, the difference also between SLI and LEAP is that on SLI, when we do a service pack, when we cannot, when we can avoid changing a package, we don't touch it at all, which means on a service pa on service pack one, everything which is untouched between service pack zero and service pack one, we just grab the binary package. We don't rebuild things because it's kind of this mindset of customer. Oh my God, you change packages, you are going to break everything. These days with re reproducible builds and all of that, it, it should be less of a problem, but. Even getting to a state where 100% of our package is reproducible is we are not there yet. And even when we'll be there, I hope, um, it will be to get this mindset into people's mind, into enterprise people mind, into um, administrator, etc. It can be very tricky. So um, SLI is kind of let's modify as little as possible. But SLI is uh, this layer, is this idea of layer of service pack. Service pack one, service pack two is done on top of service pack one, etc. Open to the leap, it's not a layered system. It's a regular distro. So a regular distro where you rebuild everything when you want to do your new next version. So which means bootstrapping the distro, which means you di discover that even though you have your GNOME packages, which are, which were able to build fine on SLI 15 SP2, everything is nice and shiny, then you try to rebuild the entire distro, not just the service pack that you have modified, but it's everything, and then you discover that, oh, that's not really working because there are other packages which are either not part of SLI, which are just in LEAP, I don't, I, not KDE, but for instance, for a while we didn't have upgraded GIMP. So GIMP was not building anymore. We did upgrade it, but there were other random packages using GTK, maybe, or whatever, which would not uh, build anymore. So we had to update that. Uh, so it, <coughs> it was um, painful, uh, let's be honest. Uh, to get to a point where everything was really linked fine for, for LEAP. When I say painful, I mean it took 45 days. Okay, there is a Christmas break in between, but still, uh, it took, and nicely enough, um, the staging containing GNOME 334 for LEAP was accepted last week, I mean this week, just in time for, for them. So I didn't push them. Uh, or, or open to the release manager to accept the staging. It just happened that yes, all the roadblocks were uh, were no longer there. So we were we were good uh, to have it, which means um, the next milestone of uh, so in terms of milestone, which means kind of milestone before the final release, the next ni development milestone of uh, open to sleep 15.2, which should happen. Maybe it happened today, I don't know. Uh, but it should happen next week, let's say, uh, because it's kind of automated. It will have GNOME 334.4. And I'm already, my god, I was fast. Um, there was not enough question in the audience. 
So, yeah, to summarize, we have uh, a great uh, system to build things, which is open, which is uh, open build service, which uh, you, if you want to use it, you don't even have, I mean, uh, you can use the uh, instance we provide, but you can even install it on your system. There are people running their own open, QA, uh, open build service instance uh, on their system to create their own packages. Um, so we've op open build service, we've open QA. Again, open QA is not just uh, an open SUSE and a and SUSE project. Fedora is using it. Uh, I, I don't know if other distro are using it. Yes, unless uses it. So a Debian distro, oh, I mean Debian OS, uh, OS three based distro uses it. So um, yeah, definitely. Uh, if you, it saves time. It can be painful to set up. I mean to to have something where you are end up to a point where it passes everything. But in the end, the, the value is tremendous. Yeah, so thanks to, our, to those tools, to our processes, to make sure that we force uh, enterprise developers to push their changes uh, upstream. Uh, so we were still able to upgrade GNOME, which is kind of a big stack. Um, just for SLEE, it's around 200 packages, uh, which are intermixed. Uh, I didn't check for, for Tumbleweed, but it's or Leap, it's probably maybe not a double, 300, between 300 and 400. Um, <coughs> we were able to do that for Tumbleweed in a month. For, um, in total, for all the distro in four months, a bit less than that. Um, and one thing is we maintain quality. We didn't ship, especially for the Tumbleweed user, they didn't got a breakage due to upgrade of the desktop because it was not released until it was passing the, QA te the automated QA test. And that's what we want. I mean, we, I think we, we probably can, everybody in the audience can agree on that. We don't want to ship broken stuff to our, to our users. Um, so it's nice. I think we can do better. Uh, I hope we'll do better, like doing things more in parallel, um, having more people joining initially to do the uh, initial revision updates uh, as part of the of, of GNOME Next, uh, making sure that we do in parallel something we didn't do uh, for time constraint, having leap and sleep work being done in parallel, not one after the other. Um, but we are uh, we are getting there. Any question, comments? Do, yes. So, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, a question about the, um, the binaries that are not, that are not reviewed in sleep, uh, but when they depend on something that was changed, uh, do you ever have breakages because of that? So, question. In sleep. Yeah, yeah. Question was. Um, because we import binary, uh, RPM binaries uh, in SLEE, if, if those binaries uh, depend on uh, another, as a dependency on another package which is updated, is there breakage? Um, in the SLEE world, <coughs> it should not, because the reason why we, um, we, we say we, this, we do this kind of binary import is we guarantee to our uh, user uh, ABI compatibility. We, so far, the ABI compatibility usually is kind of enforced by the SO name. And we are, um, we use uh, a policy which is derived from the Debian policy of having a package named by the SO name. So when things start to be like uh, the, uh, the upstream has changed their API so that the ABI is different, so it's end up with a SO name where the major is bumped. We will see that, and we will either, in that case, um, say it's it's fine. It will use the old copy, the old package. But very often, in that case, we will update this binary package to a more either a more ver recent version of the package, or we will 
For this one, we say we want to instantiate it in SP2 and, uh, and rebuild it so that it's used only the latest version of the library. Other question? Yes. Alors, um, sorry, uh, <laughs> sticking to English. Um, question was uh, to uh, mitigate a bit uh, all the difficulties of Leap not being able to rebuild uh, because of slightly changing things and not discovering that uh, oh my God we are breaking Leap. Should we should did we try to do periodic rebuild of all of this kind of thing? Uh, <coughs> sorry, we don't. The reason is also because we have. Um, The, the staging, which are uh, always monitoring what's happening on SLI. So we, um, those staging use a, a snapshot, which is usually uh, re refreshed. I think it's on a weekly base. Uh, so every week um, on, on, on LEAP, we will discover the breakage as soon as they appear. Because uh, uh, the base of, of uh, LEAP is SLI, so we will see that there are changes in, in SLI, and then they, we see that it's, it's breaking. So we don't have the concept of, let's rebuild the entire distro and see what's break, because uh, uh, the OBS is doing that constantly, monitoring all the build requires, etc. And with th this idea of taking a snapshot um, of, of a distro, and then updating this snapshot from time to time. Any other question? Nope. Oh, thank you. <laughs>